Oh, oh boy. We're the Beard Butchers, and we're here with Jonathan from Brio. Check out what we've got behind we're us. We're an entire cow, a whole cow on the world's largest smokeless fire pit. This has never been done before. That's right, John called us up. He said, hey, I make a smokeless fire pit. I wanna cook a whole cow. We started talking and scheming. They came up with this huge 90 inch pit. Of course, we came up with a cow. We turned livestock into a dressed carcass. We trussed it up. We got seasoning on it. We're gonna spend the next approximately 24 hours cooking this thing but you can stay tuned and find out how we got here and how it turns out stay tuned to the video you're not going to want to miss any bit of it this is going to be awesome We're skinning this beef using Montana Knife Company's Bear Tooth Skinner. This one just happens to have the Beard of Butcher's logo stamped right in it. Let's get started. Whole entire beef, not split, it's going on the pit. Registering in at 693 pounds, we are teaming up with Brio because they have the world's largest smokeless fire pit because you're gonna need something massive. But the bearded butcher butcher process is nearly complete. We're gonna put this in the cooler, let it chill down for a few days, we gotta carry this thing whole back out of the cooler and we're gonna prep it for the pit. So that's the next step. All right, we're here with the Bearded Butchers in the world's largest smokeless fire pit, and we're about to start the inaugural first fire. Spatchcock it 
get it on the spit. I've got my side, you got yours? Let's go. We're gonna push it forward until it gets more more horizontal. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And you let yeah, down you let down at the same time, Sean. Yep. Okay, we're gonna start Ready? pushing on three. One, two, three. Everybody good? Yep. Work with? I don't know, I'm good. Everybody good? Yeah. Oh my god, tilting over. Onward march! Twenty feet. <laughs> oh, so All right. Hold on. Jonathan, squish. Get out of the way. Ready? Hang on. Hang on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Good job. Keep it off of that corner. Yeah. See how split. Go. Try to get it. You try to flip it like so it's a... Yeah, we're gonna have to be legs up. Legs up or legs down? Oh. Well, legs up to split it to spatchcock it. It's on the table, so we're going to roll it over. We're gonna split it partially down through the through the vertebrae. Um, then we're gonna get it on a big uh, apparatus. So Seth's ready. John, who's our pit master, can take over from there. But first we've got to get it split, get it wired onto the rack, course get it seasoned, and um, then we got to get it on the fire. So the challenge is going to be using this well saw to split it down through the vertebrae, but not split it too far, because we want to spatchcock it and lay it open, but leave it attached in the back uh, where the spine is. So uh, we're going to roll it up, let's get started. <laughs> Our well saw got a little bit hot, so now our muscles and our faces are getting hot, but the hand saw is doing the trick now. Seth's dreams come true, it gets used. Oh, it's doing great too. Better than the saw. Look at that. Should have started with that. Don't go all the way through, Seth. Less is more. Crack. Nope, almost. Just give me a second because I think you're gonna crack it somewhere else. Slow, smooth, smooth, fast, boys. Scott and I always say I'm the sledgehammer and he's the slow, smooth. <laughs> I'm just a ram at home kind of guy. But the two together seem to work. Absolutely. Let me chop it. Just lightly. There we go. Let me see that real quick. Can somebody hand me that sledge over there? Yeah. There it is. It's done. Yep. It's cool. flat. We're saving the suet. That's gonna get mopped onto the beef as it cooks. Ready? Yeah! Especially maybe not. 
they got the beef all spatchcocked and laid out and we're going to be putting our custom rotisserie on top and then wiring everything nice and tight and then we'll transfer it to the world's largest smokeless fire pit feed me there we go i'm gonna is it, yeah can you we're going this way aren't we? yeah i guess i need to get up on the table i guess this is the moment of truth to see if my dimensions were correct boy it's pretty good doesn't it yeah so that'll nest in there a little bit nicer and then We'll basically be using these more than we won't even be using these cross pieces to wire much. We're gonna be using we're gonna use that center that center one, but I'm talking oh, about the top yeah, one. Yeah, it needs to be yeah. There needs to be clearance, just enough clearance. We can be. I mean, we're good in the front. Are those back ones gonna hit? Yeah, they're gonna hit. So we'll have to do a little bit more butchering to get the wires around, but it'll be fine. It's and then like we'll do a bunch in the meat. middle. Okay, we got the spit on the cow, and now we're just wiring it all down. You can see we're working all together here. And basically, what we're doing is taking the steel wire and we're going around bones and up onto the metal frame and wiring it tight. You don't want to use galvanized wire, you want to use a wire that's going to be food safe, um, like just straight steel wire, what we're using here. Out of this Spencer. We got this thing all trussed up, wired up. Only thing left to do is blast it with Beard of Butcher Blend Original. So we're just going to coat the entire outside of it, get it on the spit. Good. Bon, you guys, you got it. Make sure it doesn't shoot out here. Slip on the seasoning. Down easy. Boy, we thought that other side looked Look cool. Look at that side. Look at that side. He was gonna, this thing was Look at that drone shot. You want to turn them quick. Oh, 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 no, wait, oh, wait, wait. Oh. I would say, let me see if I can. Oh, oh, wait. Yeah, don't don't kick the whole thing off there. I can try and swing it I, around here. I would. Oh yeah, probably. 
There you go. Down easy. Watch your fingers, boys. Down easy. Down easy. Wait, okay, go. I'm good on this side, you good, Joe? Yep. Down easy. Well, hold up, hang on, I hold up. Back. Hold on. Are you good? I'm good, good on that. Okay, we're good. in. Good. Good. Down easy. Good. Down easy. Wait. Oh, oh it was his forks on the yeah. side of the pit. Good? Yeah. yeah. Going. yeah. Flyers out. Okay, you're off of it. Yeah! Well done. It's on the fire. Let's go. Do you want to move it now, John? I think so. Yeah. yeah. Do you want to try and do it the same way, or do you want to... Yeah. There you go. Good. Close. Good. About two inches. One more. Up. Good. One more on him. A little bit. Boom. That's it. It just slid a little bit. Where yeah, it's, maybe the weight. What's happening? Well, it, it slid this way, so it's got even bit. more weight on this side mm -hmm. now. The cow could slide this way. Like we kind of almost need to slide it back. Slide the cow over a bit. Like let it swing. Why don't we see what happens when we pull that slide around? I think it's easy does it from now on. Just Go kind more. of where it's at. We, uh, somebody's got to pull that. I can't in. get this pin out yet. There you go. It's out. More. There you go. Oh, it just does that on its own. Yeah, yeah. It's in. The, it's more. Well, it's more center now. Go back to the middle. Where's the next? Go back to where you were. Go right back to where you were. See how it hangs out. There you go. That might be better now. I'm not in yet. There we go, man. The other thing we could do. Yeah, is now we're good. We could throw. It just a, to be centered. We could throw a pair of vice grips yeah, on there too. Yeah, something Yeah. You guys happy? We're not flipping. Yeah, I'm. I'm stoked. This is gonna be great. Okay, the cow's on, and now we gotta talk about our temperature. This is a smokeless fire pit when it's burning hot. When it's not burning hot, you're gonna be seeing smoke. That's what we want. We want a low temperature. So what we're gonna do is have a very low fire for the next 24 hours. We're gonna be moving the fire from side to side. We wanna have most of the heat to be on either side because the cow is the thinnest in the middle, it's the thickest on the end. So we wanna have more heat on the end. It's gonna take more time. And the rule of thumb is eight second rule. You wanna hold your hand at the level of your meat for eight seconds. And at that point you pull your hand away because it's too hot. If it's less time than that, it's it's too hot for your cooking. If it's more time, it's too cold. So we're shooting for eight seconds at the temperature or at the level that the cow's at. It's 12.03 noon. It's Tuesday. We put this cow on, and we're going to be leaving this on for probably at least 24 hours. We'll keep you updated. But the starting gun is 12.03 noon on Tuesday. All right, we're four and a half hours in. The cow is looking awesome. We just pulled the van in. We're gonna be sleeping here all night long because this is gonna take until tomorrow. What I'm doing right now is basting. Whenever you do a whole animal cook, you wanna baste with a big mop like this. I'm adding original into our basting mixture. We got butter, we got tallow, we got water, and this is a great mixture to just keep this animal wet while it's cooking. Towards the camera. Towards the camera. So that way. My pin. My pin's loose. Pin's loose. Pin's loose. Pin's in. All right. This is our very first flip. We're four and a half hours in. We just went from bone side down to upside down. And now we're gonna let it here for a few hours and we'll check back in.
check this out. Corey just mentioned, this thing is raining down fat. Look at that, it's just all that goodness. Sizzling, fat dripping, dropping down onto that fire and those flames and all that flavors going up onto that, right onto that meat. Man. Um, you guys ready? Yes, yep. sir, I'm ready. Oh, there's a pin still. Nope, oh, this one, sorry. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So depth from, from now on, from making the fire, just keep it way out to the side. Yeah. Like I don't want any fire at all in the middle of three feet. I'm Scott Perkins from the Beard of Butchers, and you're witnessing an epic cook between the Beard of Butchers and Brio. John, tell us a little bit about Brio and maybe how folks at home can get their own version of this epic cook. Sure, well, first of all, th Scott, thanks for having us here. Brio is the manufacturer of the world's first and best smokeless fire pit. This is our Y series. We're sitting in front of a camper van. This is the perfect fire pit for that. It's portable, it's deck safe, it's tri-fuel, it burns charcoal, wood, pellets. If you look to our left, that's the biggest fire pit that's ever been built. That looks like our X series fire pit with the patina outside wall. It's cooking a 700 pound cow right now, courtesy of the Bearded Butchers. What did we season that cow with? Bearded Butcher Blend Seasoning, you know us from all of our media, all the examples on how we do the butchering, but we sell spices. So we use Bearded Butcher Blend Original, 10 different flavors to choose from on our website, beardedbutchers.com. For your product, you can go to brio.com, store locator. They're found throughout the US. You can also order them online. This is a way that you can bring this type of cook with these seasonings right to your back door. John, I gotta know, who you, who'd you bring with you? This is the Grill Dog. Follow him on any social platform as the Grill Dog. He's more famous than I am. Eight hours and 40 minutes in, you can see this beef behind us. It's getting nice and crispy. The sun is setting. We're getting a little tired, at least Scott and I are. These guys, they've got a camper van behind us. So John, the guys from Brio, they're gonna be here in the camper van babysitting this. We're gonna call it a night shift. They're pulling it and we're gonna see them in the morning. So the next time you see us, the sun will be rising. These guys, they're staying up all night. We're staying up all night. We'll see you guys in the morning. Have all a good right. night. Sounds good. It's all yours. All right. Well, this is the night crew. Uh, we've got Chris Beam, our lead engineer right here. And we've got Corey Leapart, wholesale uh, director. And then we have Jesse, wholesale regional manager? Territory manager. Territory manager. Right there we go. And here we have the first ever 700 pound cow that's been cooked over the world's largest smokeless fire pit. It's nine o'clock. We're nine hours into the cook. We've got a Y series burning here, Swedish torch style, camper van ready for us to um, sleep in shifts. We're going to have somebody here at all times. And of course, famous grill dog, Huckleberry. We'll keep you posted on how the night goes. Okay, it's 9.15, time for another cow flip. Follow along. Yeah. All right, it's 10 o'clock. We have the cow on its side here. Nice low coals. We're running charcoal and wood. And uh, we're at 10 hours now for the cook. You can kind of see that we are starting to get some really nice color 
on this cow and we'll keep you updated. Oh. Where'd it go? <laughs> just drop it. <laughs> Where is it? I don't think it fell. I didn't hear it. Well, I got it on video. Shine, shine up here. <laughs> <There>. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, it came unscrewed. Unscrewed and is in the chest cavity of the cow. It's 11 a.m. and things are going great. <laughs> Over here's better. Let's smoke. The wind is definitely switching. Okay, it's 12.30 a.m. We've been going for 12 and a half hours since this cow went on. I'm now gonna go and sleep in that camper and that pop top for a little bit. My shift is from 3 to 4.30. We're all taking hour and a half shifts, starting now until 6 a.m. I'll see you guys at 3. All right, it's 3.30 a.m., time for my shift. We've just been trading off every hour and a half. Cow's still looking great. Internal temp is continuing to slowly rise, so. Graveyard shift continues. Oh, easy. You're good. Good. Keep going. Touch. Going a little more. Good. Pins in. Hold on. Hold on. Don't. Are we? Are we? Is it gonna stay? I'm just getting nervous. Listen. Like the pins all the way through. Kind of let go. Yeah, you're good. He slid a little bit, but no fast movements. Ooh. Oh boy! I mean, he's, it's around so much bone. Yeah, there's so much bone. Yeah. Had me nervous. There's, um, say we get it hooked up, get some wire around it. Just for our safety, best we can. Evan's going too good to have a calamity. Mm -hmm. Oh, there we go. Pins out. My pins out. We might have to go a little bit past. You got it? Yeah, yeah I got it. John's got it. You got it, John? It's gonna... Pins. Nope, a little bit. Just there, pins in. Okay. You can definitely breathe easier when it's like that. Oh, yeah. Why is it? Always oh, wants to step back like the that. Weight, the oh, weight is it shifted. Is shifted. Now. Weight yeah. shifted. That's crazy. So we're taking the pin out again. Um. Boy, I don't know. I have this is propped up in here. I can drop it down, stop it. Wait. I won't lose it. You're just saying you're worried about it sliding off the table. The momentum of it being too much. Well, I mean, I, I can go slow, but I think we need to do try to get it a center. little bit more in the we center. Back. It's gonna slide. Or it's you could back. try and just push it with the fork and see if it... That's but I doubt that'll work. Yeah. We either spike it where she lies or we turn it slightly to see if it'll... 
You can do that. Just go slow. John's got the controls there. Can you pull that pin, Chris? Yeah. Ready? Yeah. Which way are you He's trying to get the pin out. It's still tight here. So we gotta come, come towards me. That pin's out. Mine's not. Just tip it back towards you, Chris, a little bit. There we go. Pin's out. Yeah, just go real slow. There it goes. About it, isn't it? Yeah, it's hitting right here. Worried about pieces falling off by it. That should have helped. That should have helped a little bit. Yeah. Oh, go back towards you, John. There you go. Pins back in. That's better. Yeah. Yeah, it's leather. Yeah, I saw a couple of hunks fall. Yeah, oh. yeah I understand. <laughs> So what these guys are doing is we're taking a piece of wire and wrapping it all the way around this beef. Um, we want to flip it over so that thick side is down against the fire, but we're worried that as things shrink, we don't want things to get too sketchy and scary and pieces to start falling off. So if you come down here, when we first put this beef on this frame, this hind quarter right here was actually out past this bar. So you can see how much this animal has shrunk and as it's shrunk, the, the wires have loosened up, things have moved. So this is just taking an extra precautionary measure as we flip it just to make sure it holds to this framing. Because the last thing we want to do is spend all this time and then have the thing fall into our, our pit. So just a little extra precautionary measure and then we'll get it flipped. Right? Yep. Built too strong. With a pound of cure. Sausage, bacon, egg, cheese on a tortilla, all cooked over an open fire. You just can't beat it. Oh. What did we uh, prepare those tortillas with? Our on. Lockhart steel skillet that we made. Mine, personal one. Delicious. <laughs> Pins out. Pins out. Make sure there's two or three guys in my bar. Yeah, I was gonna say I'll go this way and then you bring her around. I'm gonna flip here. Man, I'm gonna go my wire. It's definitely a lot harder than it was before. Yeah, it is pretty much a little bit easier. 
You got it? Yep, I got it. Pins in. Definitely it's breathe good. a little easier when it's when got it's up the, like that. Got it's got that metal. framing holding it. Alright, let's get you some tin foil and I'm gonna put a bunch of logs up there. We're gonna get some things How can I be able to some of these for me? Thank you. Nope. Wind and aluminum foil are they're not the best of friends. Got that one back there. Uh, it's good. Got it. Gotta watch the beard. The beard is at risk. We've officially hit 24 hours. It's 12.03 on Wednesday. We started yesterday, if you remember, back in the video, it was Tuesday, we started at 12.03. Here we are 24 hours later. We've set a few pieces of smoldering firewood on foil on the top just to help that process. Um, we do have the bone side down. We were worried that if we left it flesh side down, we were gonna be losing too much of it um, just from char and all the fat and grease dripping into the fire. So this is uh, where we're gonna, we believe we're gonna maintain throughout the rest of the cook. We mentioned thinking it would take 24 hours. We're not quite there yet. Barbecue, as everybody knows, low and slow, take your time. That's where we're at. We probably have a few hours left. Once it's finished, we're gonna remove it, get it on a table, and then let it rest for an hour or two before we start messing with it. So that's the point we're at. Keep babysitting the fire, grab some lunch, and just wait. We've got Obviously different thicknesses, thinness. We're going to pick this off of the fire and let it rest now so that we can have a mixture of what we think will be like whole beef, some London broil. So we don't want anything caving in in the middle here. It's looking great. And we certainly don't want to lose anything. So we think it's time to pull it off of here. We're gonna use the loader to pick it up, get it off the fire, let it rest before we get started cutting into it. We should mention we're 25 hours and 23 minutes into the total cook. So 25 hours and 23 minutes. start pulling and butchering it. I mentioned it earlier, 25 hours and 20 some minutes, whatever, what we say now, 25 hours and 30 minutes to when it actually came off. That's where you see it here. So you've seen this giant fire pit cooking this cow over the last 24 hours, 25 hours, and you saw it smoking a lot because we're going low and slow with charcoal intentionally. Now we're gonna throw a lot of wood in, let this giant smokeless fire pit rip, see what happens. this smokeless fire pit functions is the same as our normal fire pits. Double wall, the hot air rises through the walls and comes out of those holes around the rim. That creates secondary combustion to burn off your smoke. This fire pit's functioning awesome, same way the ones you buy on Brio.com. Everybody left and said, it's all you, Scott. No, I'm just joking. We gotta start cutting some wires so we can, oh, he gave me the bad cutters. We can get started with the fun part, which is butchering, followed by eating. Ready? I'm just kidding.
So that's gonna use a knife to break it down. Or we're gonna start, but if the ax needs to come into play, I'll have the ax on standby. So I'm gonna go down through the top of this back, this flesh, and I'm gonna score that flesh, then we're gonna try to pull this side over onto our table off the frame, and then we'll start dissecting it, pulling all the pieces, parts off, explaining what is, chop stuff up, and do a taste test. So we're just gonna start by scoring down through the top of this back. If you remember, we already spatchcocked it, so we're hoping it just kind of pulls apart. Things are starting to move. You get that shot, Spencer? Got it. See it pulling apart? There's one. There's two. Let me just, let me cut it down through here and we'll just get this hind yeah, quarter off. Pull this off. One chunk. All right. I'll just take this front shoulder towards you. So then. as you can see, we're pull apart tender. No doubt about that. The first thing I'm going to do is flip this hind quarter over, just like I would on the processing floor. I'm going to start right here, and I'm going to pull this tenderloin out. So that's the top of that tenderloin butt right there. Now what we're gonna do is just chunk this up. Puck, you ready, buddy? You've sat there so patiently. Oh, oh boy. All right, let's dig in, guys. Dig in, everybody. Cheers. Cere ceremonial first bites. Oh, man. That's good, especially with the original. Scott, oh, yeah. what's it taste like? Tastes like beef. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Love it. Wow. Awesome. Sounds good. John, you want to jump in here? Thank you, sir. One more for me. Mm. Roast beef, huh? Delicious. So obviously we have a ton of options here. We're making pulled beef, we're making cuts. At this point, we just keep going down through, breaking everything down, pulling it, cutting it. Tastes awesome. I think our first attempt at a collaboration will lead to more attempts. So the question is, what are we cooking next? There's been some suggestions. I heard uh, alligator, I heard ostrich, I heard going out west and killing an elk and doing a whole elk over the over the pit, the Brio pit. Um, obviously a lot of options. This was a fun one. I told the guys earlier that I'm gonna be kind of sad when it's all over because it was so much fun. Um, obviously a, a long time, uh, time investment, financial investment, but uh, success at the end in a marriage between, between two brands. So pretty cool. As a reminder, we used the Brio, world's largest outdoor smokeless fire pit. You, however, can own the home size version, several different versions. Go to Brio.com to check that out. That's John. The Bearded Butcher's brought in the butchering aspect of it. Of course, the seasoning aspect of it. You two can join in the same affair, just on a mini scale. That's right. Absolutely. We did it on the epic scale. So again, hope you liked the video. Thanks for watching. And quick question has this ever been done in america on an open pit like you see here it's never been done at least never been documented that i've found if you if you disagree feel free to let us know in the comments but i've never seen it done especially not on a 90 inch smokeless fire pit you heard it so the bearded butchers jonathan from brio right here we did a whole entire cow over an open fire pit that's awesome we hope you agree and until next time See ya.